The boys were called edgy. Told they'd never make it past five after here those podcast jerks are. Back for season two. The Boys in the Woods podcast. The show your mother warns you about and that your dad is hiding in the basement listening to. Get ready for the Boys in the Woods podcast. Welcome back, Charles. Today we have a very special guest, Richard. Welcome to the show. Thank hey. you so much for having me. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Man, we, oh, dude, I've been, I, I love voiceovers. I I get lost in rabbit holes of voiceovers. So. He does them all the time, but they're not very good. <laughs> that makes them better. Sometimes you know it's all I, about the energy behind it and not really the sound of the voice, right? Oh, the passion, right? Exactly, passion. exactly. I've been, I've been trying to joke around with my wife with Mickey, Bo- Mickey Mouse, and I, I get the old boys every once in a while. Oh, boy. I get, I get those <laughs> down every once in a while, but it's trying to carry the conversation, and it just turns into plankton on crack. So <laughs> try to stay away yeah. from that. <laughs> the funny is a thing tough is... One. That, that's hard on the throat right there. <laughs> Even better, the guy that does the intro for our podcast is now the new voice of Barney. Yeah, for Mattel. <laughs> for oh, Mattel, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we for met him. He's like, you squeeze Barney, stuff. and he's like, oh, I love yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's hard to listen dinosaur. to that yeah. voice every now. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, he cut us a few promos too, Corey Durham. It's, he's a fun individual. But let's start right off the bat. Let's. What brought you into doing voices? Let's, let's just shoot out the moon and we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah, I guess that started back in the late 80s. I was born in 82, so I'm an 80s baby and a 90s kid, I consider myself. So we got to dip into both. But uh, yeah, lots of tons of pop culture and movies were coming out at the time. And also it was pretty much the advent of affordable home video recording. So my uncle was one of the first, actually the first in our family to buy a Marty McFly style RCA uh, home camcorder, the ones that you have on your shoulder, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks just like now. the one from Back to the Future. My cousins, they, my uncle buys one, so his sons start messing with it, of course. And they're basically making TikToks in the late 80s. They're dressing yeah. up like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito <laughs> in Twins, because that was the latest movie at the time. Yeah. And then they got bought matching suits and they memorized the movie and started doing lines. So one day I'm like, six or seven years old and i'm like dude you guys are on tv how did you do that wow so i was super excited and they said hey if you want to play with your older cousins you got to go home and memorize a movie and we're about to film uh, a bunch of scenes from the three amigos because that was like the hot new movie at the time so we're gonna do three amigos there's us two you could be the third amigo and we'll go so sure enough i ran home bought the vhs and watched it endlessly and and started learning the different voices and they they demanded a lot because they were funny too my my yeah. cousin does voice drops and he he's on the radio professionally yeah we just all grew up entertaining each other in order to play i had to step up my game so they would always challenge me with new voices and i i fit in perfectly and that was the birth of it and it's just grown since then can i lay down just a level of appreciation that story wasn't oh i was floating through TikTok and went man i could do that better and started dropping. There's a lot of people that think they can do things better, but <laughs> you know, they don't last very long. That's for hell sure. Hell no! I, we're still fixing roads. You, you know, right. our 41 is going to be six years. It's going to take six yeah. years for Appleton to Green Bay. Me and the wife were talking. Me and the wife were talking. Super excited about this. Hell yeah! Going from a two lane to a three lane. Going to cut traffic down forever. Hell, they should have this done by the fall. This is what I'm thinking. They should have this done by the fall. Literally the next week, they're like, yeah, the project will be done somewhere around 2030. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. <laughs> what the hell just that happened? That sounds a lot like our 10 freeway. It's been like a 10-year project, and there's been traffic ever since. It hasn't improved anything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, go ahead, Patrick. Well, yeah. I did a little bit of research into you. I did get to watch a little bit of the the movie, that little bit of the T2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, oh, it's got lost. If you close your eyes, you can't really tell much of the difference between watching the movie and listening to the voices. It was great. Um, yeah, that was that was a dream come true project. Yes, that was. Fun. I know it had to have been. I saw the. I, that was one of the first things I was cooking through the Instagram. I got to see it said special announcement, and I was like, that was last week or week. Yeah, last week, and I was looking. I'm like, I got to look it up because Charles and I usually like to try to do a little bit of intel beforehand, and that was a hard yeah. one to find. But I once I did get it out there, that was awesome. So uh, props to that. That's fantastic. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, and that was all. So really, the you, you we just went from the birth of the impressions and the voices and performing the love of all the way to the very end, which is the most 
I, I got to actually have an official voice credit in a movie after six months on Instagram doing the Arnold thing. And, and it just, it's, it's been blowing up. It's been growing. So we have two big bookends that we can fill in the middle now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. With, with doing a voiceover for a movie. And this is where it started, where we were just kids playing. And, and, and we never thought anyone else outside of the house was going to ever see those videos. And here we are. And here you are today. Yeah. And you got to voice over a movie. Well, let's, uh, let's fill in a little bit of the in-between. After, what led you to really start pushing out socially? What led you to start pushing the videos out? Because as a funny person, the, we always make people laugh. It's not something that, that is like a Monday through Friday thing. What, what more or less made this almost a, or definitely a Monday through Friday thing? Well, okay. It, it started out, it grew from doing home movies to doing stuff at, on the schoolyard to performing for the family at parties and friends, and it, it just started growing from there. My elementary school experience, my junior high experience wasn't social. So you had mentioned that term. I, I was very awkward and wasn't good at sports, always last picked, yeah. always reading comic books. I was on the fringe of stuff. I didn't really quite fit into the mainstream things like Michael Jordan and all that stuff that was yeah. in at the yeah. time. I just, I, I could not relate to it. I would rather read about Spider-Man and how he had to pay his rent and all yeah. of the struggle. That spoke to me there. for some reason. And it's still, it rings true now to this day. So it's crazy. You say that me too. I've, I always thought to myself, I'm like, dude, what are you working a nine to five for? But it's right. keep going. So at, at the same time, again, I'm awkward and I'm a loner. So I learned how to draw. So the, my number one thing is I'm an artist. I just, I draw every single day, a little bit every day. And it fuels me and it, and it allows me to express myself and really de-stress. I'm drawing. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm awkward at sports. I'm trying to find my way in my world. I, I don't know where I fit in here. Boom. High school comes and I just get dumped into a, a drama class. Yeah. I had an extra elective. I guess I didn't pick up or didn't fill in and I'm in theater and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? I had no idea. Yeah. First week hit the ground running. The, my, my teacher, Mr. Chang, thank you, Mr. Chang recognized the energy and the spark. And I guess he, he really helped me a lot. So he helped me have self-confidence. He put me out there. He supported me as a mentor to me at the time. So he promoted me to advanced drama second semester freshman year. And I had my first starring role that spring. I found my people. And yeah, yeah. high school theater was incredible. I, I went to workshops. I learned improv comedy. I did stand-up comedy. I did Shakespeare. I did musical theater. All kinds of stuff that completely broke me out of my shell and made me pretty much who I am today, this seemingly outgoing and, and, and endlessly creative person. I mean, I got the bug big time, and I was performing for tens of thousands of people, stand-up comedy, and they're dying laughing, standing ovations. Oh, my God, I loved it. Natural high. Right. Oh, yeah, dude, it was incredible. Oh yeah. And um, I get to college, and I find out that I have to take ballet for a theater major, so I quickly bow out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I switch over to a radio and TV broadcasting uh, uh, major, which was amazing. I learned all kinds of cool old school tricks and did ride alongs at KFWB and 991 KGI and all these great uh, radio stations in the Los Angeles area. The pursuit, though, it wasn't paying the bills. It wasn't the paying the bills at all. Very competitive at the time. Now it'll be a different story for trying to get into radio. You could probably get right in now. But I decided to become a fireman. My whole family has is firemen, nurses, paramedics, police officers, military. So I just fell back into the family business. Well, and, uh, and thank you for that, man. Being a fun yeah, hey, hey, I know you and the police officers have your nitpicks, but man, oh man, it, it ain't no joke. Yeah, we're all one and, now, dude. We're and, the, the and, team. The team is the team. Yeah, we're all one. We're all okay. battling the same battles. So, so, so we're, as, a, we're, as a former Army infantryman, we fuck with the Coast Guard, but we're family. So it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, the yeah, Coast Guard does some badass time. stuff too. And yeah, but I got the rebel. We, we had a probationary fireman that was a Coast Guard guy just six months ago. So, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, he had a lot of great, cool stories. But oh, anyway, man. we all make fun of Coast Guard because we're yeah. jealous. We're, that's legitimately what it comes down to. So, yeah, it, uh, yeah the rivalry. You got to have a, a fun rivalry. We're, yeah, we're guys, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, man. But that's being, yeah. being a firefighter I, is fantastic, dude. That's super cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do EMS paramedicine yeah. fireman for i've been doing that for 20 years in the los angeles area total and then i've always dabbled in social media i've always thought i had that spark i've done well before yeah. not as well as right now but i had a, a podcast about being a fireman i had an instagram about being a fireman and it was just fireman it was too much yeah <laughs> two hundred fifty thousand followers on tiktok twenty thousand on instagram twenty thousand on youtube deleted it all one night just killed it 
Yeah. Just told you yeah. it, it just wasn't for you. Too much it stress. It wasn't my thing because I was going home and talking about being a fireman and then I was going to work and talking about being a fireman. Bro, where's yeah. the break? So I completely shut everything down and vanished to Mount Crumpet like the Grinch. And <laughs> everyone was hitting me up and where are you at? And I, I took six months off, went into monk mode and all of a sudden just had this idea. I need to get back on here, but I'm going to focus on Instagram and I'm just going to be myself and I'm going to be a complete dork and geek Boom, it starts firing off. So here comes the yeah. end. I promise I'm getting to the end. Oh, no, take your time. Oh, no, I, I love your story, by the way. Don't my faces are always weird because I'm weird, right? But I love yeah, your story, I'm, dude. I promise. I'm long-winded, dude. I'm like a Kevin Smith if you're familiar, dude. I'm just yeah, I won't yeah, go. Good. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, but so, Chatty um, Cathy. So anyway, exactly. Me Gift off, to gab, baby. Gift to gab. <laughs> the first Arnold. I'm wearing this t-shirt in honor. I'm wearing this t-shirt. I'm in my Honda Civic driving home from work. And yeah. I threads just opens up that the threads app is a like an offshoot of instagram that just yep. opened up and yeah. everybody was jumping on and having a great time dane cook right dane cook follows me back oh. dane cook follows me no <laughs> exactly that's awesome yeah. dude <laughs> so i he was one of my inspos when i was yeah. going through all the stuff in high yeah. school he was massive and i would memorize his stuff and his energy i emulate a lot i love his energy right so you're a fan of dane back, cook you're probably yeah. a fan of my instagram or you know, tiktok or whatever but yeah, yeah. He follows me and I lose my mind, dude. So I'm in my car <laughs> and I'm reminded of my sketch I had in high school. My, my, it all comes back to me, everything, the memories and the, just great times. So I just said, screw this. I'm firing up my phone. My Instagram was dying at the time. It was t plummeting. And I said, screw it, dude. I got no one can scream quite like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, the leap of faith. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> Six million views. Six million views. <laughs> And it just so what was, here's what was here's that where it gets like? good. That blows up, and I start going all in. Yes, finally, because I love the Arnold. I love doing my Arnold yeah. voice. My stomach decides to explode. I'm septic. I'm septic. This is July of last yeah. year, oh and I'm 24 God. hours away from being six feet under forever. Oh no God. joke. I'm at work. I'm having pain. I'm scared. I get rushed to the hospital and I get under the knife for four hours emergency surgery. Man. Removing sections of my stomach. I have a colostomy bag. I've had one since. Dude. Second chance at the right freaking time. If this guy's a colostomy bag. All right. So that said, hey, I'm going to be off of work for a while. The Arnold was kicking butt. I had to take a couple of months because my dumb, I had 28 stitches in my abdomen. I couldn't yeah. even talk. I, so let alone scream. Ah, so I'm trying artwork and I'm doing all this to get back in the game. And then November, or November, December comes, boom, went all in. And it's been pretty much a thousand to 2000 followers per day growth on Instagram. And not only that, but I'm meeting amazing people doing really cool podcasts and just having fun. And that's really what I set out to do because well, that's I felt like did. I passed away yeah. the first yeah. time. And this yeah. second time is my one up extra life Mario bonus level. And I am going all in on it. The mask in the background love makes it. way more sense now. I love it. <laughs> I love hearing your story, seeing the Batman behind you, the comic books coming in. Every, most of the time when you have these things like this behind us, they're connections to our past. And, and hearing those images and seeing them, dude, this has been fantastic. Oh, Charles and I are big nerds. We got ourselves made as Funko Pops. They're literally behind yeah. us in the thing. Yeah. Got just, Duck Hunt neat. Nintendo game behind me. <laughs> Yeah, I do those too for I do those for followers. I'll do I'll I turn them into custom Funko Pop illustrations and oh, I'll nice. them that and they print them out for their kids and they make great gifts too. I really enjoy doing those. You had mentioned in in your story that you're an art that you were an artist and that you draw. Is that something that you continue to do as an escape or as a creative process? Maybe both. Both. I was meeting a lot of frustration because I, when I was a, an EMT, I was an EMT for seven years. So that's like the minor leagues for firemen, right? Fire, fire, yeah. Being a fireman, that's the big leagues, the way to put it. But oh, as I was big. in the minors, so to speak, I, we worked alongside with the fire department and they all had really bitch and shirts and each station had um, like a theme up all night. So they were 7-Eleven because they, they ran a lot of calls or that station 24, 24, seven with a lion or something. Bitchin. Eco three, two, one for us. Uh, we were the gimlets. So exactly. We would be like Boar brother Boar and shit like that. Yeah. 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 Very so cool. Military. Yeah. You guys have yeah. patches. You guys have, yeah, it's bitching way to have camaraderie and if, unity as dudes. We need that stuff. I always saw that. I loved it. And I go, dude, I, that would be bitching if I was the guy that gets hired and can draw these for the stations. Wow. 
So obviously I get hired and I start drawing them and I start learning very quickly that we're all grunts and that's, <laughs> they call us that for a reason. Yeah, and yeah. not we don't really communicate with each other that well <laughs> when it comes to stuff like that. But yeah, when it comes to getting stuff done, yeah, we're gonna get together and we're gonna do it. But when it comes to d- describing artwork and what you want in artwork, it's very difficult for firemen to explain yeah. that. So <laughs> I was doing that as a side business for three or four years, where I was doing logos for departments all around the world. Lots of pride, but a lots of headache. And I learned very quickly that artwork is mine. Yes. I, 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 it's here. It's like my kids. I yeah. keep my kids in private, so I will keep my artwork in private, at least to sell. But I'll still show right. it. So I, it, because it is such a decompression for me and because it's so personal to me and because it's a way for me to get out whatever demons I have that day, it's pretty much impossible for me to share it because I get very anal about yeah. comments with that. So I, I keep most of that to myself. But I, I do it on the side all the time, be out of the public's view, I guess, the best way yeah. to say it. Right. And, and you did, you had mentioned a good point there, and I'd like to ask, is it, when I get the chance or it gets brought up, when we talk to individuals who are on the internet often, the internet is a special place filled with a lot of very special people. When you first started blowing up, I'm sure there were many positive comments and many positive reactions, but littered inside there is the hate. How did you deal with that? And it, was it an ever-changing thing as time goes on? Hey, this works today, but it might not work tomorrow. And you're always adapting. Or is it just the acknowledgement that, hey, some people are just angry and you're welcome? I've been at this for about 10 years now in, in various forms. I've had probably eight different accounts in those 10 years. And this is, I'm talking day one Instagram launches. And I was taking pictures of my food like everybody else. But it has, it's evolved from actually your friends following you to you want the global reach. Those of us that you have a podcast, you want the globe to listen. Yeah, absolutely. You do, period, because you want your message out there and you should. You should have that opportunity. Just when you show up. Yeah. I mean, what we we tried Danish the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We we try to reach out to all of them. (laughs) We get weird countries and you're like, it's not even caption in english for them like i don't understand how they're listening but they are and good for you guys for trying yeah. so you go out of your way to hear this mouth talk in english in your language i'm at least going to say hello how are you exactly that out from there. exactly but, uh, and that all comes from the love of whatever message you guys i know you guys yeah. got together and said this is the message we want to do let's go and you're like yeah boom i love it yeah we have that opportunity now but it's new it's yeah. brand new and we're all learning how to communicate all of us now I don't know about you guys, but I'm, again, big nerd, and I've been on the internet yeah. since 97. Yep. AOL, chat rooms. Yep. Uh, yeah. All of MS. my emails are my first and last oh, name. The, the squelching noise when you'd sign it. Yes. Yeah. We like yeah. to tell people that we were alive when Google was born. And yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I remember walking out on the sidewalk and going, Mom, I'm calling you from the sidewalk. I've got a cell phone. Well, see, he was crazy. born in 82. I was born in 81. So... I remember everything that he's talking about. I yeah. remember going to the movies and watching Twins. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember all of it. So it actually hits me. Charles is a little bit younger, but he still remembers all this stuff too. Yeah, like I, we were geeking I, over that the, the I was brothers thing, my own ass before the, the TikTok 90s. that you have on there. <laughs> I watched the entire thing, and then you get in the car at the end and you start going with the Danny DeVito. <laughs> it was great. I lost it. But you guys are you guys look like sports fans, so I'm sure you guys were on your favorite sports message board during that time as well. Yeah, on the internet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, it argues with people all the time. Yeah, and that sports sports is right up there with politics as far as like divisiveness and people going oh, yeah. after each, people other, hate in, each other. In my opinion, and yeah. Star Wars stuff is right below because <laughs> those fans. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Yeah. but uh, you get something wrong. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm covered. I'm sleeved up with Star Wars <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> You're perfect. Yeah, and I just. That's a whole other story, but I, I guess I could talk about that's related to this answer. But it, yeah. uh, a part of being on those message boards was we were lurkers, at least I was, and, and that there yeah. was a name for it. You just went on and you looked at everything. You did not yeah. participate because they would fillet you. Yeah. And in a smart way, they wouldn't go after your character like they do now. They would not go after no. your affiliations with whatever you love and believe in. You know what I'm, I mean? Yeah. They don't do yep. that. That's what happens now, which is sad. They yes. were smart about it and clever. And witty and funny like a campfire. You come into a campfire that you're not invited to, you might hear some comments, right? That's how the message boards were back then. So I was raised in that. This is pretty tame compared to that, in my opinion. 
We like to mention Call of the original Call of Duty Xbox Live chat. Um, yep, same. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All that very. <sighs> Yes, that's all I yeah. will say. Yes. <laughs> for about for about two months, when everyone found out that you could go and actually find chat logs from specific games, the world was on fire. Yeah. There was oh, a lot of your mom jokes in there, Charles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, dude, really. everything. Yeah. Call of Duty. Oh, it was insane. Call of Duty and Microsoft apparently have all of those original conversations, like, data locked somewhere on a, a compressed. You just got to ask for the specific game and time and... Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh shit! It's on a. It's probably stored on a Microsoft Zoom music player somewhere <laughs> in a <laughs> landfill. I'm like, God, I should not run for president. I promise you that. Dude, yeah, know. I think if you could survive message boards and you can survive yeah. the the game chats on Call of Duty, that I, what is happening now is very tame. It's sad because it's public, but I think people are right. are we're we're going through a, a collective growing pain right now as a globe because we're all on here yeah. at the same time. So we're we are gauging how much is too much and what's funny and what's not and who's worthy and who's not and it's very democratic but at least the people are talking and yes they're sure. linking together that i have all day for and i think people should yeah. talk more about everything I but agree. there's a way to do it we haven't quite figured it out yet those of us that are do have to read those comments some days are harder than others but for the most time as long as i have the frame of mind of i don't know what they're going through they don't know what i'm going through we are all human. Humans are programmed to immediately see the negative because we want to run away from danger faster yeah. than later. It's just yeah. an evolutionary thing. So the low hanging fruit is always there. I'm here for those that are look a little bit deeper. And those of you like you guys that have seen a little yeah. bit more than what I have to offer, reach out and we have wonderful yeah. conversations. And I really, I'm so grateful for all the wonderful people that I've met through this. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that too. That's something Pat and I have enjoyed heavily over our process yeah, it, it just started with just the two of us like talking sports and it's gotten to the point god how many, i don't even know how many people have we done charles probably 50 over 60 50. people yeah interviews? i mean and, yeah. and from all over the country all the way to australia yeah sweden and and hearing the individual stories of how people grew up and being able to connect with them on an individual level has been something that's been fantastic it allows mm -hmm. me to see the human in everyone. And like you mentioned, on our comments as well, from time to time, it's, you're welcome. It's more or less the mindset that I go with it. It's, I understand that you're angry, but I don't think you understand how much you're projecting about yourself through that comment. And uh, far be it from me, I do. Uh, from time to time, I get caught, but so does the biggest fish. It's like... We're, we're each other's mirrors. We're, yeah. We are each yeah. other's mirrors is another thing that helps me out in, if let's say... I'm like Kevin James, sweat the small stuff. I never, if you ever seen that stand up yeah. act, that just yeah. freaking encap encapsulates me in one, one hour uh, stand up. But the little things get to me, right? Damn it, I lost my train of thought. Where the hell was I going with that? Sorry. Oh, yeah. I had a good you're one good. there. The little yeah. things bother me every day. Like, I mean, Char we let it get to us every time we get on the internet. Charles and I, like, he, he will send me screenshots of people, literally him, just... arguments of him arguing with people, and he tries to tell them why they're wrong and elaborate on why they're wrong, and they look back at him, and they, they got no comment because there's no comeback from stupidity. Yeah. It's just, Mirrors, oh, that's man. what it was. Mirrors. Mirrors. Yes. Mirrors. So there we, we are each other's back. mirrors, so if there was something that is bothering me about the person that I'm speaking to, it's only reflecting back on what I need to fix in myself. So if, if there's a clicking sound they make with their noise or so I, or with their when they speak, I need to get over that. We had I need to get over that. That's a stupid thing to hang on to. Interview. Yeah. He clicked the pen the entire interview because he was nervous. And it was in the background the entire time. And Charles, is, he was grinding his teeth the entire time we were with this guy. It wasn't Something a bad interview. That, just no. It, oh, it always says more anyone. about yeah. It always yeah. it's we're just here to reflect each other. Yeah. And it it can be a good thing. I don't I don't mean it's a bad thing. At the same time, like I think maybe I'm reflecting back someone that pissed them off or cut them off or a, a brother they don't talk to or someone that was just really mean to him. I might look like that guy. I might sound like him. I might have said something that reminds me sure. of a tragic event. Hey, you can have it. Let them have the anger. I don't really even engage unless there's a funny response. It's rare, yeah. but. I don't engage it. it though, the big accounts don't. That way. It is. No. Uh, if you notice, there's a lot of accounts that struggle to grow and they focus too much on highlighting their haters. So yeah. what it does to your followers, there's beautiful, loyal followers that, oh my God, they're amazing. Yeah. I'm spitting in their face by posting something negative. That's I'm spitting in, in my good people's face yeah. by highlighting this jerk. That's just one out of a thousand. 
Why do that? Try not to make stupid people famous. That's something that we talk but just about treat, often. Respect your followers. Respect respect your followers. Yeah. They are good people. They're very, very much, so. much part of this. Yeah, well, we love our followers. They engage often. We enjoy the conversations. The guy we've won't uh, leave the mug alone. This guy wants his coffee mug. <laughs> He's emailed me like five times. When are you giving away that mug? When are you giving uh, away this Sunday. mug? This Sunday. This he Sunday. wants it. He, that's how much he, he loves it. That's mug. a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're just they're fantastic people. For one, we really can't do any of this without them. So exactly. Um, we try to get as much feedback from them as possible. What do you want to listen to? What do you want to see? More interviews. And they like our listeners, for the most part. They enjoy the originality, the personal, the real that that, that comes out from this. Uh, some uh, questions that we love to ask on this podcast. Growing up, what was your favorite meal? Because it, it just sparks up so much thought. My, my family is very bland, and I yeah. am not. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. It's a funny, cute story. and I, I love yeah. my family. They're great. They're so supportive Good. and positive and love them. But yeah. their taste, my that's my parents, my sister, and I. There's only four of us. And the, the three of them can eat French fries and plain ass chicken every single day. <laughs> every single day. Yeah. And they could have in and out without any toppings I, every single day. And I, I need the flair. I need the flavor. I need fireworks. I need presentation. I need Gordon down. Ramsay screaming at me, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. You know that. But. <laughs> Growing up, I had I did not look forward to meals. And as when I became an adult, and especially when I became a fireman, I saw what the human hands can make. Yeah. You can cook so much just by that's it. And we have the internet that can teach us. So I started learning all kinds of meals. So yeah. tri tip became my number one go to. And that tri-tip. is my favorite meal of all time. I can eat that every single day. <laughs> every single day. Mine's yeah. still pizza. I, I just I can't get He's over a simple pizza. Guy. I've had an argument with almost everyone I know about the health on the pizza side. I said, listen, that food pyramid is a triangle, okay? And guess what shape the pizza is? Well, pizza's on there somewhere, but it's at the bottom. It's not uh, that, at the top. That's what I'm saying. It's got all the food groups. It's got the salt, the dairy, that's right. junk the food. wheat, the protein. The grease. The grease. <laughs> you need a napkin get rid of some of that. But that's <laughs> That was, that yeah, was probably just... a result of uh, the Ninja Turtles that actually, because I remember <laughs> being obsessed with mushroom pizza back in the early 90s. Oh, yeah, man. mushroom pizza was the go-to order for sure. Have you caught any of that X-Men 97 on Disney Plus yet? Dude, I've been so busy, bro. This is, I did a, a podcast on Tuesday. I've been pumping out content. My surgery got moved up to next week. Thank God. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dude, no, I have not been able to consume much at all. I've after, just been a mess over here. After the surgery, at, no, after the surgery, when when you when you have a few moments, I yeah. heard nothing but great things about it. They, they Good. Pick up the story right when it left off. What I think ninety four or ninety seven, whenever. Yeah. Or, God, X Men ninety seven. You've got me into so many things, that. Charles. I'm barely trying to hang on with Halo here, and now you got me <laughs> jumping into X Men ninety seven. Oh, I don't it's know so how good. I'm gonna find time it's for so this. Did either. Halo get better? Because I, I watched yeah. the, the first. Okay, good. Because the first uh, season yes. was ho hum. There's there's one and two thirds episodes in this in season two that. Oh, good. You're like, I understand why you had to do it, but you could have done it way differently. But the rest of it is fire. I'm talking 10 Good. minutes into the first episode and you're like, and the end of it, you're like, I was Googling when does season three come out and there's nothing about it yet, but everyone's still on board and the anticipation for it is huge. They Good. should start filming soon, but they haven't yet. Okay. So we can, we won't expect it until about 2026, but yeah, it's, it's really I'm assuming you guys are were Halo fans. You remember the release of Halo 2, right? Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. And it was the, also the launch of Xbox Live. Yeah. Yep. So cool story about that. So I'm yeah. working at Best Buy. It's 2001, I think, or 2002. And I'm working at Best Buy, and my buddy tells me, hey, Sony PlayStation's having auditions to go to E3. Do you guys remember Electronics Entertainment yes. Expo? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that was always at the LA Convention Center, and at the time, it was closed off to the press only. You were not getting in as a civilian. Wow. Press only. And they... Every game developer's there, yeah. behind the scenes stuff, dude. It's bitching. So it was the biggest big deal. Attack they, of the show and everything. Oh man. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. I met Adam yeah. Sessler. I met Adam yeah, Sessler Adam there. Sessler. But yeah, yeah I'll yeah. get there. So Probably my buddy work. tells me, he tells me, hey dude, they're having auditions. I don't want to go by myself. Classic story. I don't want to go by yeah. myself. Can you come with me? Yeah, we'll carpool. So, so sure, we drive into Santa Monica, enjoy the day, walk on the beach, go to this audition. All right. Well, I'm in this room and there's it's about ten thousand people over four days that they're interviewing. Right. Yeah. 
So we go in this room and there's a big mirror. It's dark. There's lights in here and two people asking questions. And, and you hold up a sign and they're filming you. So they say, okay, why do you want to go to E3? Why should we pick you? Blah, 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 blah. So then they tell me, what is different about you than anyone else? The ten, all 10,000 people we're going to interview. What makes you number one? And I says, well, I can tell you right now that I do the best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression that you have ever heard. <laughs> and uh, I will sit there and I will interview Miyamoto. If I see Miyamoto, I say, Mario, you do the daddy of Mario, come on. Metal Gear, Resident <laughs> Evil, that zombies are getting you. Oh, no. And I just, I went off on a big old Arnold monologue and yeah. I could hear the people on the other side of the mirror laughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I say, dude, I'm in. I have I'm to be. In. In. They're only picking 10 people out of these 10,000. So I, they're shaking my hand. They're patting me on the back. I walk out. And right before I walk out the door, the camera crew runs after me. Yeah. And they go, give us one more. Send us out. Say, like, Arnold, <laughs> just go. They give me the microphone. And, of course, I just go, this is Arnold, and this is the PlayStation Network. See you next time. And, it, and boom. <laughs> Long story longer, I get in. I'm one of the 10 people. We're interviewing all these people. I met Adam Sessler, and the whole oh. point of this was they had a Halo exclusive private event where they oh, had a Connex man. box inside yeah. of the, the convention wow. center, and they had a dude playing. It was a video, but we we now know that. But he was yeah. playing an early build of Halo 2. Oh, and they had God. we waited in line, and we went to this little mini theater, and the sound effects. At the time, we were... <laughs> oh, my oh, God. My God. And the internet wasn't much, so we couldn't go on and brag to anybody. We, no. We, no. no one would believe us. Yeah. But, dude, it, that was a freaking phenomenal experience. And we went in as reps for Sony. We uh, I worked yeah. for Sony for a week. Amazing. Oh, my God. That's yeah. so cool. Oh, See, they're so spoiled. Fantastic. He's got Comic-Con. He's got all these the crazy know, places we like to go UP, to. We got to talk to fucking pine cones that we put twigs in and was like, oh, check me out. I'm Santa Claus. Walk, walkie-talkie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you know, thank God for Tommy Boy. Fuck. <laughs> we would have been screwed. Yeah, right? <laughs> the UP was great. It was beautiful fishing, hunting, camping, trees. The real stuff. Yeah, the yeah. real stuff that matters. Yes. Well, I have a question for you since you're a fire. You were fire fire. All right, so we watch Dal Fire. I have one question. Manny's dad was a fire chief, and my dad went to California to fight the fires way back when. And he told me that they actually did fight alongside of the inmates. Huh? But is it as big of a deal in California as it used to be? They still do it to this day? Uh, I don't think they do it anymore because of politics and money. I think that's, yeah, I think that's uh, why it went over. But it was a program. Is here in California is yeah. is its unique way, and and they have removed that part, and it's making more work for those rest of us, which is yeah. okay, but not really because there's a shortage, and there's a reason why I don't talk much about my job on social media, <laughs> and this is why ah, you're, it's yeah. sticky, no, man. Yeah. It's sticky, it bro. And the poli- the more I learn, the more I really, oh, I just, oh. it's, ah. it's it's yeah. Yeah, it's like the new battery. No, we don't talk politics coats. either. We just you can just say it. Yeah. I don't agree with a lot of things that are happening right now, and that's all I will say. I, ugh, I, don't get me going, please. No, no, please don't get no, me. because I won't stop. This, this, yeah. Some of the th- I, I had to you can have private course. conversations <laughs> offline. Yeah, well, yeah Charles, Charles had to get off Twitter because he, he was getting he was giving people Bro. he he got to the point where you couldn't even argue with people. He would just send him a plant emoji because he they would be like, "What the hell is that?" And he'd just be like, "The best I can do." So I don't yeah, have to deal I, with you anymore. I, I assume exactly. they just waste oxygen. So here's your plant and go waste it with other people. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I would just get in trouble a lot. And I guess trouble, but like Facebook jail. And then I would get angry that I was censored. And then my ADHD would kick in because things weren't working the way it was supposed to. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> You sound like the me. Sun's out. Yeah, the fucking sun's out, man. Go inside or something. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I love comedy. I love comedy. I think one of the very first actual comedy anything outside of like, well, Eddie Murphy and the Disney Channel would have been Eddie Murphy in Raw and Eddie Murphy in Delirious. Yep. And yep. I, yep. I just, comedy has always Coming been. Coming to America. Yeah. yeah. Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, oh, Beverly Hills Cop was immense, bro. That was huge. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, they're making another one. Uh, I heard Axel or Ailey or something like that. 
yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I, I have a, I, for, uh, in celebration, I have a, <laughs> and then another, <laughs> that's coming soon. <laughs> nice. So awesome. little, little preview, preview there. Song. We'll be soon. Yes. Oh, I, I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll be looking for that on the Instagram for sure. Patrick, what else you got for our guests? This has been fantastic, man. You've been a barrel of stories. Yeah, we love it. I got I got a dude. I got tons, bro. I could go for hours, dude. Well, I want to. I want <laughs> nice. well, to. Good. Good. So in the beginning, we talked a little bit about how you got started, and then we threw in the spoiler about the end. Let's hear a little bit about the voiceover, the movie, how it started, and anything at all you want to talk about. I can't wait to hear it. Sure. Yeah. The voiceover thing I, I've always wanted to do that and I've always been told that I have a nice resonance to my voice and I'm not this is my normal voice I'm not doing anything extra to it this is how I've learned to speak I'm and jealous. but what's that I said I'm jealous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the same time over the years to get a laugh and to fit in and to, to just pass the time like we're talking about to decompose and, or decompose no not to decompose opposite yeah, of that to de-stress no. <laughs> we learn to play with our voice and sound like we're on old-timey radio this is a Vince Scully yeah. or something like that but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was always a dream of mine, but it, al it almost seemed, it seemed like a dream. It's, it just seems yeah. so out of reach because it just seems the way they fantasy, they uh, romanticize everything, right? With the movie theater and, and yeah. Hollywood and all that crap. You get older and you realize, Hey, screw that. I don't care about that anymore. And you become more fearless. But yeah. So that was part of the, some of the stuff that I was throwing out there with the Arnold stuff. I would get, people would ask me, what do you want to do with this? What's next? And I'm like, I just want to like making skits. I really just really do enjoy making content on instagram if i wish it just could stay at that but then i got this the account was called our t2 remake started following me and it was interesting it was ai they yeah. were an ai account yeah. so of course the first thing is ai sucks everyone says ai sucks and i'm an artist that does everything traditionally oil paints right. tattoos airbrushing you name it of course i would hate something new and i'm older so i'm gonna oh ai, AI <laughs> yeah. they reach out to me and they say, hey, we're making this movie. It's made out of AI, but AI voice work is nowhere close to human, period. Yeah. No, uh, the stuff even. that you hear with Snoop Dogg and all that, it's very much assisted, and he did a lot of work for that. But to just go in the studio for five minutes and record a few lines and hit a magic button, nowhere close. So everyone right. listening, rest assured, AI community is not coming to kill us or take our jobs. Talk to I'm text doing more research, workplace. talking to this guy more, researching more. He's giving me all this info. He gets me on X, and I'm doing all this research. AI sounds pretty cool. And there's yeah. a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to layer that stuff on top. It's again, there's no magic button. It's just yeah. a tool. Boom. I'm comfortable with this. Let's move forward. Sure enough, two weeks later, I'm in a, a recording studio right down the street from Universal Studios, Hollywood, oh, with a producer with gold records on the wall, Lil Rock. And these other rappers and stuff are, are all over the place. And we're, and the best part, not just that's the clout, right? That's the ego talking. Yeah. That's massaging my past self. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I'm living vicariously. Keep it up. <laughs> the beautiful part and what was cool was three dudes that had never met each other before that are in completely opposite ends. You have a, a, a sound engineer, yeah. a, a movie producer, and a performer. Yeah. Vibing immediately, laughing, improvising, at doing, a, hey, do it like this. No, do it like that. Hey, oh, what about this line? Just yeah. freaking vibe and creatively, dude. Like a jam session. I'm not a musician, but I imagine a jam session would be feel like this. Just energy. Yeah. And I walk out of there just feeling completely fulfilled. I and I didn't get it, I didn't get paid one dollar. Everybody was there voluntarily just to showcase their talents. Yeah. But the fact that I was able to line up with three complete strangers and laugh and have a great time and also make a project, which is great. And we had a premiere in Santa Monica. Red carpet premiere. I dressed up like a cyberpunk T1 Arnold, Terminator 1 Arnold. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, hosted the yeah. events, moderated the interviews, did a trivia and gave away prizes at, at, and did, did 15 minutes of crowd work. And dude, it was everything. It was everything a performer could ever dream of. We have my name on a silver screen with this beautiful old theater. And I got to rub elbows with directors and producers. And yeah. Dude, I never in a million years would have thought. And if this is all that comes with it, I, I can die a happy man I, if I don't yeah. do anything else. I'm sure more stuff will come, but yes, dude. Oh my God, dude. I I've never been. This is what gets me going. I love being creative. I I really love it. Yeah, the cool thing about creating to to me is at the beginning there's nothing there, and then at the end there's just this entire show, and the laughs and the 
likes and the shares and the comments. It makes you feel good. And it, at times you just sit back and you're like, man, I don't know how I got here, but damn it, I'm having a really good time. And I, I really enjoy every minute of this. The Being able to create that laughter and that joy in other people by just a small thought blossoming into what it has. It, 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 it's fun. Yes. And I believe I I brought up the ego again too. And I've been really attached to this idea of I, the ideas that are out there, they exist yes. on their own. They are their right. own life. They're their own energy. They're, they're yeah. just out there. They're, they are, they're hanging and we're conduits and antennas and we, an idea will come through and you go, Oh dude, that's a good idea. If you don't act on it a month or two later, You'll see it. Yes. Yeah. You'll yeah. see it. On TV. Yeah. There's someone else will go. Oh, I came up with this adventure. Go do it. I came up with that two months ago. Why did? It's because Why the idea I was meant to be born in one way or another. It'll find its. It'll find its host, and it'll be yeah. born, and people will enjoy it because it has to happen, right? It has to happen. Yeah. So, as I think, the only thing that differs a creative versus a non, right? I, and I'm not trying to make people feel bad. You either are or you're not. But if yeah. you are. Yeah you have the discriminating taste to go that that that's an idea and i'm at, i have to do it now i will yeah. and that's what i do i will drop my fiance has ideas up the wazoo the okay. step brothers video was her idea 100%. oh yeah really 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. i love that I, I give her so much credit for so many ideas that was all her and that was as soon as she said it i literally we had plans that day and i says i need two hours you dropped said, everything yep. I'm doing and I launched it. Reading Rainbow was my friend from high schools. That he same thing. Dropped what I was doing and did the Reading Rainbow one. <laughs> yeah. And that one's Sorry. at like six million views. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you we'll give you one right now, Charles. Let's just give me an idea right now. But we won't put it on the show. But we'll give you an idea right now. All right, Charles. What's one? So I, I do this on one. by the way, and and we do you, people do shout outs and I do it right in front of them. In front of them. So to so hit me with a, a theme right, Charles, song or a, a a classic '80s song or a or a line or a skit. So like Arnold going in to buy coffee and then burning his lip. It is, is a, what is this? It's a Starbucks. How come you keep changing your menu? I do not know what I want. It is just a white chocolate mocha upside down, but all of the coffee would fall out. Anyways, uh, just give me a Pike's Place roast. All right, thank you. Yes. I have a gift card. Do you want me to show you that or am I going to give you the app? Everything is on the app. All right, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Damn it, what are you trying to do to me? You need to put a warning or something on. Oh, there is one. I'm sorry. English is my second language. Goodbye. Thank you. Perfect. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, 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 that was fantastic. See, the, the funny thing is you're never going to run out of content. Because never, ever, you're ever. right. Never. It, it's, and if you it's, enjoy doing it, that's the well, best. And to be able to best. be able to create that up too. The white chocolate mocha, that was so funny. I, everybody loves white chocolate mocha. It's the only thing I get when I go there. I can't remember. <laughs> I cannot. My uh, fiance will be right next to me and she's like, I want a double mocha, sloopa dupa, Crayola, upside down cake. <laughs> And I'm like, and I'm not in my head, and I'm, and I get to the right, welcome to Carolina Starbucks. Can I, can I get a, and then just can you lean over, please? Yeah, yeah so I've had that. She, the the wife just gets the app. She's like, can we get Starbucks? I'm like, order it. Yeah, I'll walk in. I'll a go seven. Get it. I want a seven. I don't, I'll stand there and, and Rachel. <laughs> yep, that's me. And walk right over and grab it. I don't care. I said, please. This is the way. This is yeah, the way. Yeah, it's, it's simplicity. Oh, that was fantastic, Zuni. This, I want to let you have the floor, give a shout out where people can find you. We'll obviously have all these links and everywhere on the episode when it passes out and all that. But please let our listeners know where to find you because they need to if they haven't already. Thank you so much. Does, does this mean that we're done? I'm having so much fun. Damn it. Oh, we're just man. getting warmed up. <laughs> Damn it. Darn we're just going to start a sets. We're going to be doing our squats and our dips and be working on my quads and my calves and this. But yeah, well, I tell you what, so, you're welcome back after your surgery and your recover anytime. This, so. Yeah, oh, yeah man. I, I would love to. I would love to be back whenever you would have me. I, this, uh, I'm very honored. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you've made it this far, you are fantastic. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
Yeah, I am on Instagram is my main vein, and I will continue to keep that as the main vein because Instagram, the audience on Instagram got me to where I'm where I am and I will remain loyal. I'm a loyal dude, I swear. Yeah. I will stick with you guys and bring you all along with me everywhere I go. And I do, and you I'm so appreciative, man. I, I get emotional. I really do. Yeah. So Instagram at Geek Fire Inc. And that's ink as in tattoo ink. And that's geek like a Star Wars geek and fire like a fireman. So Geek Fire Inc. on Instagram. I am at Geek Fire Inc. on TikTok. But TikTok displays my name for some reason. I still haven't figured yeah. out TikTok. It's new to me. But I'm Richard yeah. Zuniga on TikTok at Geek Fire Inc. also there. I'm on Cameo, which is going great. Thank you so much, everyone, for accepting me on Cameo to do your shout outs for birthdays and stuff like that. Also at Geek Fire Inc. Oh, and then we have the number one hit single, Arnold Beck. I'm bringing Arnold back. Ah. <laughs> that is on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, Google Play, all that stuff under it's Arnold back and the spelling counts A H N O L D Arnold back by Richard Zuniga Geek Firing Studios that and a full album coming soon. Now that's what I call Arnold and it's going to be a <laughs> You know where I'm going with it. It's going to be a, it's going to be like, oh, remember Adam Sandler, the Adam Sandler CD yeah. where you do skit, yeah. but also have music? Very much yep. that, but it's going to be all Arnold and <laughs> he is going to travel, he, he's going to travel forward in time from the 90s to now to save pop culture. And that's going to be that whole album. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I will be writing it while I'm in the hospital with love, with all love for you guys. Free 99 you, for you to download. I'm not charging for it. If, and if, then, you move, if you have a poster or something, let me know. Give me your address, Charles, and I will purchase this. And we yeah. want to put it up on the wall for the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give for, me some what, details whenever that does come like, out. Do you have a, a poster? You want a poster for, yeah. Oh, for your album. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'll, bring you, I'll bring you something and send you something, dude. I have all kinds of cool stuff. You, yeah, if oh, you guys yeah. want some decorations, let me know. Dude, we'll absolutely. Talk. Yeah, we will absolutely dude, put one up here. We've the got a, we got a book from one of the ladies that was on here. It's back here behind this michigan thing right now oh. because i it keeps falling over so i need to get a, a book stand and i that's I a no-brainer like dude proper yeah oh yeah i got you yeah talk. yeah that'd be bitching if yeah, i'll draw something there for you guys just yeah we'll talk after yeah all right um, sounds great yeah those are all my plugs youtube's coming soon podcast is also coming soon oh and then tiktok live is where it's at I, i'll be on tiktok live all weekend friday saturday sunday doing arnold karaoke singing all of your favorite songs <laughs> saying your favorite fans. lines giving your birthday shout outs and all that good stuff Oh, that's fantastic. I can't I wait. I love that. I can't wait. I it's fun, dude. You, have so you, I can't have wait for in? it to pop up. I, not yet. I, I, well, I'm going to be up for Easter this this weekend, but I, I'll jump on. I don't care. I got plenty of time in between. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. No, I'll be, I'm, I'm going to jump on this weekend, too. You'll get a you'll yeah. get a shout out. Um, well, not that it was anything special. I'm only me. But, no, thank you so much. And I do. I look forward to having you on again. I look forward to talking about Star Wars the the specific batman you have behind you i like that era much more than the, the, the yeah no don't fall this is my batman right here oh my yeah God. yeah that's, that's my era man. that's with. my number one batman love this oh. dude love the colors love the campiness love the fun yeah one of my favorite just... things about dc batman in the very beginning around 1940 or 1938 to 1940 Batman would have radioactive material in his car. So Bruce Wayne would drive and pick up like criminals and drive them around and take them to dinner and then bring them back. And then later that night, Batman would get his radioactive goggles and follow the footsteps after they left his car, which led me to two True really detective. funny facts. You knew if your girl was effing around with Batman because she can't have kids no more. Is she driving in that car? She can't have kids no more. <laughs> like, immediately after 1944, 1945, Batman stopped using radioactive materials. So... <laughs> well, radiation poisoning was figured out at that point, right? It was a really big shift in the comic books. But DC's got that, that app. And you can go on and read every single comic book DC's ever created. Yes, yeah. From those are the bitching, dude. Beginning of time, yeah. So we used to have to hunt I, for that stuff, dude. We used yes. to have to hunt yeah, comic book shops hard. and pay fees and prices. And now oh, these man. kids these days, they just have it all at their fingertips. So I can't wait to to talk to you a little bit more about that. And I do. We want to get you on right after. Oh, not right after, but as time moves on after your surgery, I want to hear about your recovery and chit chat a little bit more about the geek inside of you. That, that's been fantastic. The tattoos and. Good old and Batman. 
Batman. Good old Hot Toys Batman right there. Oh, yeah. Love this guy. <laughs> Great Scott, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hard nipples, Batman. <laughs> Well, Richard, thanks you, Arzuni. Thank you again so much, man. Uh, it, it has been our absolute pleasure. This has been fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome.